So a little bit about the telescope here while this little animation runs. Uh, we talk about three big components of it. The telescope itself, the gold uh, hexagonal structure everybody thinks of. Uh, the spacecraft element, which includes that sun shield and also houses the propellant and avionics and batteries and things like that. And then behind it, those white uh, structures you see there are the science instruments. And we have four of them. Uh, in the order they're listed there, the mid-infrared instrument is the one that sees the longest wavelengths for us. It was built by a collaboration of European countries and it has contributions from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. They did the detectors and the cooling for it. Um, the near-infrared spectrograph is, was given to us by the European Space Agency. Uh, the big U.S. instrument is the near-infrared camera that was built by Dr. Marsha Rigi at the University of Arizona working with Lockheed Martin uh, in Palo Alto. And then the last uh, bit there, the fine guidance sensor and near-infrared imager and slitless spectrograph is the Canadian Space Agency contribution. Mm -hmm. And so they have a functional part, the fine guidance sensor, which keeps us locked on targets. I like to say Canada is helping their uh, unruly neighbor to the south stay focused <laughs> in there. And then the near-infrared imager and slitless spectrograph is their science instrument. So we knew we needed cameras and spectrographs. We needed a big telescope. Uh, that looks a little bit different. We could talk more about that later. But to realize those things, we had to make a bunch of inventions. We had to invent technologies that actually enabled it. I won't go through all of them here, but uh, some of the most amazing ones uh, I do have pictures of later on are the back plane, the superstructure behind the mirror, the mirrors themselves, which are beryllium. We made them out of beryllium mined in Utah, throw away 95% of the mass. So really all you have is a millimeter or two of beryllium sheet whose only job is to carry a thousand atoms thick of gold to do the infrared reflectivity. So all that structure is there to carry a thousand atoms of gold to reflect the infrared light. So speaking of the science instruments, it's just uh, uh, the, these were the things in white in that animation. In the upper left corner is the near-infrared camera. This will be the main, the workhorse camera that you'll see a lot of pictures from. Uh, it's actually a redundant instrument. It's got a top and a bottom half. They're identical. Uh, and that's because this is also the instrument we will use to make all those mirrors work like one. And so it's completely redundant. Should one camera fail, we could use the other one and that way keep all the other instruments able to work and you wouldn't lose their functionality. The upper right is the near-infrared spectrograph. That's the European Space Agency instrument uh, for scale because there isn't a person in the picture there. That's about the size of a baby grand piano, that uh, optical bench there. Uh, it has a micro shutter device inside it that was built at the Goddard Space Flight Center and that's about uh, you know, uh, 100,000 or so little uh, shutters that are about the width of a human hair that you can open and close so you can isolate particular objects on the sky and let their light into your spectrograph. It's the first time we'll fly something like that in space. Wow. Bottom. Uh, that's incredible. It's, it, it is a, <laughs> an amazing instrument and I think it's the one that astronomers will it, it'll really be a workhorse, but I know it's going to be one of those things, it's going to be more complicated than everyone thinks when they first start, like, oh, yeah, I can do that, and then they start working on it. <laughs> oh, well, it's going to take a little longer. Uh, the mid-infrared instrument, bottom left, uh, it's both a camera and a spectrograph there. It's being assembled uh, actually at the University of Edinburgh was where they uh, had been putting some of that together. And then the bottom right is right before it was uh, shipped. That's the Canadian fine guidance near-infrared imager and slitless spectrograph. So all four of those instruments got put, uh, now looking at the left-hand side here, uh, into this uh, cage, we called it an uh, integrated science instrument module, uh, and that was lowered into the telescope structure, and on that picture you can see the goal of the telescope, it's pointing down at the floor. Uh, this is out at uh, Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. And then the picture on the right is just the very end of that process where they've lowered it uh, into the ISOM compartment. Then once that was all together, uh, they, we needed to test the telescope and the instruments together. So first a little bit about how that telescope 
works. Uh, we're called uh, a three mirror anastigmat design, so we have three uh, main mirrors, elliptical, a hyperbolic, and another elliptical tertiary mirror. Um, but there's also a flat steering mirror at the end that we can use uh, so we don't have to slew the telescope for small motions. We can just move that mirror uh, a little bit. Uh, the mirrors, as I may have mentioned, were made of beryllium. Each mirror segment can be controlled in piston, tip, and tilt, and we can also adjust its radius of curvature. So even though they look flat to the eye, there is some optical power in them, and you can sort of push the center in and out. We know that when we launch this, it will be out of focus. Just, just giving you that warning right now. <laughs> but we can adjust it. Uh, in, in fact, because it's a uh, this infrared telescope that has to work extremely cold temperatures, the mirrors now, are they're out of focus because they're at room temperature and it only comes into focus when it's extremely cold. Uh, it's part of the reason why it takes us so long from when we launch to when we get data back. We have to cool down so that the mirrors are smooth as they were supposed to be at cold and not bumpy as they are at uh, room temperature. So did we test that? Well, of course we tested that. We took it down <laughs> to the Johnson Space Center uh, where the, we uh, refurbished the old thermal vacuum chamber that the Apollo mission used <laughs> to test the Apollo spacecraft. They used it to heat the spacecraft so they could uh, test the effects of uh, moving the spacecraft and how that might affect the astronauts. And of course, we wanted to be just the opposite. We made it a cryo chamber so that we could drive things very cold. Uh, it's interesting when you go down there to work on the side of the chamber, it's a National Historic Register facility. So I thought that was kind of cool that we're you know, doing modern day technology in this uh, you know, historic structure. And, uh, and they didn't make us wear skinny black ties and get <laughs> through that, so that was, that was good. We didn't have to go, go to all that trouble. But this was after uh, we did the test and uh, sure enough, they were able to move all those mirrors and exercise all the instruments. And uh, I'm delighted to say that it will meet the scientific promise it has once we get it on orbit. Uh, everything worked uh, as planned. So that was very exciting. Uh, the structure that lies behind that telescope, even though we're just carrying those thousand atoms of gold up there, thousand atoms thick of gold, uh, it's this backplane, this structure made of a carbon composite material. It comes in thin sheets that they lay up and epoxy together. It's incredibly strong, it's very light, and it has the property of a lot of things on web. It, its behavior as it changes temperature is very well calibrated. And you can see the little uh, note up there about how precise it has to be. We have to know how this is going to change to a fraction of a human hair because that will affect uh, the image we get back on the telescope. Uh, in fact, we were able to see when we were testing it down at the, the uh, Johnson Space Center, uh, there was a camera at the top of that chamber. They would shine down, uh, and that chamber wasn't as cold in the top as the rest of the chamber. And just that very slight exposure to a few degrees temperature caused some of the insulating material to feel a change in temperature. And that incredibly tiny stress could be seen through the back plane. So it, it carries that information uh, to the optics, and we have to be able to correct that out, and they were able to. So the other characteristic thing, other than those gold uh, hexagons, is the big sun shield for Webb. It's our parasol that we use to block infrared light. Most telescopes block the stray light with a tube. Uh, we are a naked telescope. We don't have a tube. That's because we have most of the sources of infrared light to one side of us. We'll see that in an animation later. But by keeping the sun, the earth, and the moon more or less on one side, we only need to protect ourselves on that one side from this, uh, the infrared radiation. Uh, being a, a fair-skinned person, I love that last little uh, thing there, SPF of a million. I, I could use that. Now, the, the spacecraft element, uh, which is both 
the sun shield. Here we see it all folded up in its launch configuration. Uh, and then the spacecraft bus, which is uh, essentially it's the infrastructure that enables the whole observatory to work. It's where we have our reaction wheels, our gyroscopes, our fuel tanks, the batteries, the electronics. They had completed their environmental testing, so we subjected them to the vibration of a launch of an Ariane 5, the sound <coughs> from an Ariane 5, and the thermal stresses they will feel, which are different than the telescope. This part only sees more or less room temperature. It sees the sun all the time. The telescope never sees it. And it's in fact that great contrast in temperature that means we can never test the whole thing in a thermal vacuum chamber on Earth. There's no chamber big enough that would let you get the heat on one side and the cold on the other side and, and not be an infinitely large chamber. That's, that's what we have space for.